giving you a voice. And making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archive first robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun at loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Good evening, fellow Firsters, and welcome to this week's installment of the one and only Mouth of the South Region Recap Show. Thank you very much for spending a few minutes with us this evening. As I'm sure you're all aware, events for the season from week three through the championship has been suspended or canceled in the championship's sake. Uh, while all of us here at Mouth of the South share your pain, sadness, and frustration, we understand the rationale for those decisions and agree with that the safety of each and every individual is what matters most. However, just like all of you, our brains are still in full-on robot season mode, so we'll continue with our shows throughout the next several weeks and hope to bring you great content and keep you engaged with some of the great things we saw during the season. We're currently in the process of setting our lineup for over the next couple of weeks, so keep an eye on the space for some great insider info from some of your favorite teams. So thank you again for joining us. Let's get this underway. Reporting for first updates now, I'm Marco. I'm Michael. And I'm Colin. Um, and what we want to start today's show off with is um, circling back to kind of that content that we want to put for you guys here over the next week. We'd like to ask the chat and anyone here, um, which teams would you guys like to see featured over the next few weeks on the show? So, um, you know, it's obviously easy to feel bummed down and, um, and down about the current situation, but we're hoping to do here at Mouth of the South is to give at least a few teams, uh, one or two teams a week, the opportunity to come onto our show and share with the community the amazing work that they put in this build season and give their students, obviously, especially the seniors who had their season cut short here, a chance to brag a little bit about what they were able to accomplish this year, give us some insight into their overall design and match strategy, and really just show us their awesome robots and what they were able to accomplish this year. So to that end, we want to ask our folks in chat, what teams are you most interested in seeing uh, on a future episode of Math of the South? Give us up to three teams each, and after the show, we'll kind of go back, look through the chat, and see what the audience's wishes to hear from and do our darndest to see we can't make that happen. And we're, we're coming from a couple different regions, too, within Texas and, and outside of Texas. So we can probably hit a large chunk of teams in, the, um, in our region. So definitely throughout the show, point out which teams you want to see. Um, and then those of us from the, within the region can go and, and try and you, you know, get behind the bumpers, uh, try and see if we can, you know, get video within their shop or their facilities if they're still able to get into their facilities, and then of course bring them on air if if uh, we can get certain guests to to come on. So um, yeah, and good clarification from Tyler, uh, definitely from the mouth of the South region. If you want teams from uh, other regions, you'll have to go to their broadcasts and beg them to to go ask. But yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah we don't have any 254 contacts, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I see some obviously as expected 148, 118. Um, we'll see what we can do about getting mm -hmm. some space cowboys happening. Um, so if Adrian, if you're watching, get in touch and uh, we'll see if we can make this uh, work out. So while you guys continue to let us know who you'd like to see, uh, we'd like to kind of move on to the next kind of topic here and just talk about it a little bit. Um, we obviously know the impact that uh, a shortened season has had on all the teams and all the mentors and, and students. Um, and wanted to talk a little bit about maybe what some of the secondary impacts of that are um, that I know myself and, and uh, Colin and, and Michael are kind of going through for us uh, the secondary impacts of, of that shortened season. And one of the things that I think comes to mind is um, that I know we're dealing with and, and that we've heard from a lot of other teams and fellow mentors is um, the grant money that you miss on that qualification for state and world championship. There's a lot of grants that continue to give additional money as a team continues to progress. And it's not unheard of really, as, as we were talking through some friends to look at teams that are missing on five, 10,000 plus in grant funding because of the lack of a world championship. Uh, and that can obviously have a meaningful impact looking forward into the 2021 season into the funding over the off season. Um, and then obviously the, the experience, um, not just the experience of being at world championship, but the experience of having a returning crew of teams, a crew, uh, crew of students 
come back with another year's learning and experience and all that they've been through, uh, which I think is probably even more valuable than any of the grant funds that, uh, that we miss. We just can't replace that type of, uh, of experience uh, nor those team members. And I think another key part of that, too, is the timing of grants. Uh, so I know sometimes you can get uh, kind of that money returned to you if, for, if you don't use it in your portal. And so it, it, depending on when you, you got some of this money into your portal, like we, I know for us, we tend to pay for a lot of it at the very beginning and then bank on all that money coming, coming back to us at the end of the season. And this kind of throws in some weirdness in terms of when you're going to get that money back. Um, or you know, not having the money there in the first place, like Marco just said. So I know that that's going to cause quite a bit of issues. And and on that note is just the I guess sponsors too. Um, I had a problem today specifically working with one of our sponsors who was asking for media of our robot and their logo within our uh, within our pits and all that. And it was kind of a hard conversation to have, saying, "Hey, we never got to compete this year. Uh, I know you you gave us all this money." And you know you were expecting your logo on our robot, which is something that we had promised all of our sponsors, and all of a sudden to come back with not a whole lot of media to show them. And even more kind of damaging on top of that was that we probably won't be into our facilities anytime soon. So getting actual footage of a robot in action is going to be kind of a challenge. And then you know re relaying that information up to our sponsors. Uh, so you know where does that transition leave you too? It's it's kind of hard to tell your sponsor hey, we didn't get to compete this year. Can you give us money next year? Like, I guess that, that kind of leaves some weird gaps in communication and, uh, and scheduling conflicts that, that can occur. Yeah, definitely. The whole, like, funding for next year, I, I know at least 1710, we try to get all the money that we need fundraised for next year done at the end of uh, the previous year. But if, you're, if your team isn't uh, on that sort of like schedule, it's going to be, it's going to be challenging to get all the sponsorships for next year and all the funding, especially since, you know, the whole economy is, is, uh, in a little bit of turmoil because of this whole virus situation. So, I mean, I really hope that, um, everyone's able to get funding for next year. Uh, regarding some mentor burnout things too, that I've experienced. So, uh, I know it's really difficult for a lot of mentors to come in and they may make a lot of sacrifices, but a nice rewarding part for them is coming into the competition and seeing the students perform with their robots on the field at the end of the day. Without that, I think it's going to be really difficult to kind of maintain some of those on the fence mentors or just getting some of your existing mentors back in the shop for the next year as they're probably really burnt out and they don't got, they didn't get to see that the true nature of the tournament and, the, the robot pan out with the students. So I, I think that's going to cause some issues too. So, you know, if we're talking sustainability, it's, it's students, mentors, funding, you lose your seniors, the existing students that you have in the team no longer, um, you know, they don't have the experience of going to competitions. Your sponsors are, are a little rough and the money situation with all the funding, you're, you're taking a huge hit on sustainability for teams. Yeah, I think that's, that's an excellent point. And Michael, you and I were talking about it a little bit earlier is, uh, you know, we, my team at least got to see the field once. So even though you're talking about all of those, you know, probably thousands of hours that the students and mentors and everybody put into that, being shortened in the payoff is just the 17 matches that we ended up playing. There's at least that payoff, right? There is still a, a known quantity, a, a result of all that hard work. And you have teams, unfortunately, as, as yours, and, um, you know, I don't know, probably a quarter, a third of the state that, that didn't have a week one or two event. That are in that same position that I think you're, you're spot on. I think makes it really difficult for if you have fringe mentors or people that are just joining in or on the periphery. It's really hard to say I, I spent however many hours or however much money on this and to come back and, and not have anything that kind of rewards that um, for the students and obviously for the mentors as well. Yeah, I think that's especially true this year with the with bad going away. You know, teams were putting in like. People, teams are still going really hard trying to finish robots or even you know, add upgrades and to not see all of that turn around and be able to actually be able to see through like how getting rid of bag was actually going to turn out um, if teams would you know get as good as people thought uh, now we're not going to be able to see so I mean kind of going and talking to like how the bag situation I mean I was hoping at the end of the year we'd sort of be able to look back at the whole season and see uh, did the bag work yes or no what sort of things that we like or not, but this year we, I, since it cuts, got cut so short, I don't know if we're gonna get too much insight on that. Yeah, I guess that's something I never really considered. Is like, you know, we're gonna have to now look two years for next year when we're looking at the the impact of bag. We have to look two years back. So uh, 
that's a very good point that I didn't even consider. Um, and I think the other point too that uh, Colin mentioned uh, before is, I think on the positive note uh, is off seasons uh, this summer, I think are, um, mm -hmm. are going to be crazy. You know, I, you know, thinking locally, um, the big, more established of the off seasons in Texas, at least is TRI hosted by um, Alan Gregory and everybody at Spectrum. And, uh, you know, we'll talk a little bit about DCM uh, district champs and does that happen? But I think whatever happens there, you will have the top teams in this state loaded for bear heading mm -hmm. to uh, TRI saying, this is a thing where we can go and win it. And we're going to be a, a team against a team. And I think that's really exciting to see an event that we know is really well run already. And to just, up the competition and up that level of, of competitiveness, I think is going to be really exciting. I agree with you there, but it's it's kind of difficult to assume who's who's the top teams in Texas. Like you're going to have to fill out an application to get into some of these invitational, you know. I mean, I'm talking even IRI, cheesy, you know, cheesy champs, all these things. Um, how are you going to present yourself? Like how is, how are you going to present your robot when you've never competed for some teams? I think that's going to be a challenge. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing some more like in-depth reveal videos. I know I know a lot of teams recently have like just shown off their 11 11 ball autos. Or I, I think I if you're trying to like apply for some of these invitationals, definitely what teams have done in the past, especially for IRI, is they'll make an application video where they'll show off all the different features of the robot, all the things they've improved. Um, they'll kind of I mean usually they put in some highlights from their season, but if you can't do that this year, just add some more auto routines, add some more driver practice. I think that's if you're trying to get get an IRI or some of these more select invitationals, definitely make a make a application video. Yeah, and I guess my last point before we we move on here is, and I've been super ad, uh, I've been advocating this for the last week is uh, you did make a robot. Your season's not you know your season's not toast. So take the footage you do have and take that extra time you do want to spend and make a really nice reveal video or some mm -hmm. sort of broadcast of of what you you guys made because uh, as students. You just spent 300, however many hours you guys spend on your robot, showcase it. Put it on Twitter, your any of your, your team's social media, um, and make sure that everyone knows what you guys built because that time was still spent you know, you know, making a really, really nice robot. It's not for waste. Right, good point. So switching gears a little bit here, um, let's talk about some of those teams and the efforts that they did and the time that didn't go to waste, at least teams that we had an opportunity to see on the field. Uh, and talk through what teams we saw this year that we felt really had a good plan together for this game, uh, for how they approached it, or uh, maybe even how they uh, appear to be approaching the season, albeit obviously got cut off. And, you know, I want to start off by by talking a little bit about 6377, Howdy Bots. Uh, that's a team that I think really approached the season in a really well thought out fashion. Uh, this is a team like most teams that knows they can't look to design a do it all bot out of the gate. And what they've done a really nice job of, and really for two straight seasons now, is focus their energy on an area of the gameplay that makes them be really competitive during qualifications and really valuable during eliminations. You saw that last year um, when they sacrificed everything beyond the first level. They were really fast cycles on the cargo ship and the rocket, uh, and always counting on their super reliable flippy boy climb to win matches consistently, ranking high at every of their events. Uh, this year, it looked like their focus was on their autonomous routine. They had a three and three um, auton that they ran out of the trench site. Uh, and then scoring in the outer port. If you look at their matches in Greenville, you're going to see consistently throwing up a large volume of shots, a lot of them going in from that trench run. Um, and obviously the drawback to their design is that they did not have a climber, so they just kept running that, um, that shooter game through the end game. Um, but I think it was a very strategic trade-off that said, I want to focus on the shooting game early in the season and then look to add the climber as they progressed. Um, we get an opportunity to talk to some of the mentors, some of the 2005 mentors did, and, and I know that that's kind of how they were planning it out. It's let's focus on the shooting and we can get the climber as the season goes on, uh, which we know is a thing that by the time district or, or world would have happened, you needed to have a climb. You, you were going to have three on three climbs at, at every match, basically. So while not without risk, the fact that they were number one in tele -op power cell points at the end of quals in Greenville, I think to me was an indication that the plan played out as they intended, and I was excited to see uh, what they bring to the table, and, and I am, whenever we see them compete again this year at an offseason or wherever, so good job by them. Yeah, I, I also want to I want to highlight Team 4522. They competed in Week 1 at Greater Kansas City. Um, I really love their robot. I mean, they, they added Swerve this year. Um, their intake was super great. It was, I mean, looking at the robot on the field, it was 
you know, it was a step above almost every other team out there. And uh, knowing knowing that program and and all the all the students and mentors on that team, they were they were really looking forward to you know improving, getting better throughout the season. Um, so I mean, and their auto was also, I mean, they had a really great six ball auto that, I mean, with their swerve and everything. So I was really sad not to see them continue, but I mean, they should be really proud of what they showed off. And then I guess the last team we'll talk about here um, is 2714 Barbecue. Uh, so in their second season, 2714 Barbecue pulled off their second win of their career. Uh, last year, they won their second district event in Plano. They went to the finals in their first one. So they, they got to the finals in both districts. And then this year, they started off even stronger by winning their very first event uh, of the season, which was looking really good while doing it. And I was very confident they were going to do well at their second event as well. Now, remember, it's only Barbecue's second year. Um, based off their successes, it's hard to remember that. Their mentor squad is absolutely fantastic. And coming off a strong previous team, I think the squad has the means to make 2714 a perennial powerhouse team in Texas. Yeah, I think that's a, a great pick. I got an opportunity to see 271 uh, firsthand at the Greenville District, and that was just a, a bot that was built to win now. Smart design. Um, Good driving, good, uh, good design overall, and obviously that that paid off. And it would have been interesting. I, I heard rumors that the, uh, the students were looking at potentially a pretty significant redesign. They liked what they had initially, but they were looking to kind of um, get a little bit more and kind of hang with the uh, with the more elite teams in the state. So maybe if they go to an off season, we'll see we'll see what that looks like. But um, I think an excellent pick uh, in uh, in Amy Barbecue. So. Um, switching gears again um, a little bit, why don't we talk about uh, what's next uh, for kind of each of our teams? What are the focus for the next few weeks, offseason goals? I'm sure that there's a lot of, as you said earlier, a lot of people that are in the similar um, similar space as we are. So um, for me, for 3005, um, much like a lot of teams and schools in the country, we're currently under a ban on all after school activities. In fact, just today, um, we, we learned that the district is on indefinite hiatus. So. Um, like all others, we're making a lot of final preparations for that week three event when word came down last week. And we were lucky, uh, unlike a lot of other schools, to have mentors in the shop throughout that day and get an opportunity to debrief with the team and, um, you know, share the tears and, and the hugs and everything to, to kind of help the students um, cope with it. And for that matter, the mentors cope with it as well. Yeah, exactly. Um, and had an opportunity to, to kind of spend that time together. Uh, and, you know, right now our plan is as soon as we can or as soon as we're able to get back into the shop and continue preparations, um, whether it's improving, iterating, more driver practice, better autonomous, et cetera, and just be ready for whatever the next event is. Um, you know, whenever that's a rescheduled district event, delayed state champs, uh, competitive TRI, whatever it is, um, our plan is just to come back and, and work our asses off to ensure that whatever the next time that this robot hits the field, we're ready to contend, we're ready to win. So we're we're just waiting for, for the word to say go and then ready to get back into the shop and, and hit it as hard as we were before. Uh, for my team, 6800. Uh, 6800, unfortunately, did not actually land on the field at all. We did not get to compete in week one or week two. We were scheduled to compete in week three in New Braunfels and then host our own tournament in week four here in Austin. I actually had not seen the field at all. Um, everything was back heavy for me for all of these uh, these tournaments. Um, so last week was spent finalizing pit display boards, tuning autonomous routines, and of course, comp bot shakedown and drive practice. Uh, my students heard of the cancellations before I was able to get a statement out to them, which I was a little bit upset about. And uh, Chief Delphi was filled with responses shortly after. Now, thankfully, cancellations occurred before we packed our trailer and started traveling. Um, I heard a, a lot of other teams were not as lucky to do so. Um, as for a robot, there's a couple pictures I'm hoping Tyler will be able to pull up. Um, we continued our tradition of black and silver robots that are slightly too heavy. Um, we had two telescoping arms, courtesy of our three mentors, or three of our mentors' time on Team Rush 27, and took inspiration from Team 67 Hot, their utility arm in 2012. Um, our robot also took off after a famous black robot 148 Robo Wranglers, and that we had a, ro a robot Wrangler. So we were starting to look at how to effectively use it at competitions, uh, securing straps in the right places on partner robots, having enough Velcro, etc. Um, the upcoming weeks were going to be spent tuning our autonomous routines and figuring out how to quickly adapt during tournaments for the buddy climb. Uh, what to do now? Well, my students are now on spring break, and we do not believe we will have access to our shop and facilities anytime soon due to school district restrictions. Uh, therefore, we are taking a much needed break until we can get back into the shop. And the coolest thing we're looking forward to is our new facilities. Uh, 6800 in combination with our 10 sister FTC teams 
are getting new facilities this summer. Uh, a dedicated first facility, we will have a complete FRC field, space for two FRC teams and 10 FTC teams, and two FTC fields. Uh, we're scheduled to move in in September, so this summer we'll be spent purchasing new equipment, organizing our space, and preparing to have a fantastic 2021 season. Now, hopefully we'll get to compete in some fun off-season events in Dallas and Houston during this time period, and maybe throw in a, in a summer CAD challenge as well. Awesome, yeah. So 1710 we competed at a week one, and uh, certain things went really well for us. Certain things definitely had some room for improvements. Um, going forward to our uh, Iowa competition in week five, um, we were working really hard, taking advantage of the no bag to kind of revamp our whole intaking, indexing, shooting system. Um, and right in the middle of you know working on that, working in the in the shop, uh, we heard news that all the events were going to get canceled. So, I mean, I, we just stopped working and had a little meeting, to get together and talked about what we we're going to do for the rest of the season. Um, no, no real consensus on what to do. I, I mean, we're going to be focusing on, you know, off season stuff. We we do uh, summer summer camps, so for outreach and stuff like that. So not really sure, especially since our school and build space is canceled for indefinitely. So what I'm personally looking forward to is I've heard some rumors that there might be a spring catathon that in the next couple of weeks that could probably take some of our minds off of being home home with not much to do. Cool. Um, so now let's move into our uh, top 10 for South Region mini season recap. Um, we have uh, some great teams uh, that landed on the top 10 list, nearly a full Texas sweep. Um, Bomb Squad, the lone representative from uh, outside of the state. So looking at those top 10, we have in the number one spot, no surprise to anyone, 148 Robo Wranglers out of uh, Greenville, Texas, followed by their... Um, Space Cowboy Partners, 118, the Robonauts. In third place, 2468, Team Appreciate. Spectrum holding down the number four spot with their blue banner win this year. Kryptonite, 624 at number five. Um, that uh, team from Arkansas, number 1516, Bomb Squad in the number six position. Texas Torque at number seven. 3310, Blackhawk Robotics as the number eight. Uh, number nine, 2714, Barbecue. Uh, and then finally, number 10, uh, 2687 Baby uh, Appreciate Team Apprentice rounding out our top 10 for this um, shortened season. Um, some great teams in the top 10. Uh, 148 reversing the rank from week one's voting and seeks into that number one spot. Um, it should be said, probably also in the number one spot in a lot of people's minds in terms of the best robot they've seen this year. We'll find that out here um, in about a day or so. Uh, but guys, any uh, opinions uh, on this? So, um, if you have any, please feel free to post them in chat. Let us know uh, what you thought of the top 10. Um, but other than that, that's going to do it for us this evening. Thank you to everyone who took the time to join us today. Remember, we'll be back again uh, in one week bringing you an in-depth look at one of the top teams in our region. As always, Fund needs your help to stay loud, live, and independent. Please consider giving us your support by joining Fund Nation with a subscription or bits on Twitch, becoming a Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now, or just letting people in first know this is a place to get their information their team needs. Don't forget to check us out on any social medias of your individual preference, including Discord, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and live on Twitch. On behalf of myself, Michael, Colin, and our producer, Tyler, I'd like to thank you for tuning in, and thank you all to all of our moderators in chat. If you're watching us live, then up next for your viewing pleasure is Best of the West. Talk to you next week on the map. North, north of the next. Um, we the north. Uh, sorry. Talk to you next week on the Mouth of the South recap show. Stay safe, everyone. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and tier two plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent.